Hello everybody, GamerPenny here bringing you another episode of our Final Fantasy XIV Online Let's Play. We are back with Vesper. I am almost- oh, Cat saying hello as well. I am almost to Tamtar Deepcroft. We're almost there, but I actually wanted to stop and show you who is sitting right outside. So it's Dolores Bear, Emanafa, and Kikinia. And they were out- um, or they were the adventurers that showed up after we turned in the Sestasha quest. So, I thought that was kind of cool. I, I don't remember seeing them out there <laughs> before, so I wonder if they're just there because we are on... Can I slip past you now? <laughs> I, like, ran right into that skeleton thought maybe we could slip past. Um, but I think it's because we're on the quest that they show up there. And it's little details like that that make me love this game. Um, because I don't remember... I honestly don't remember. They're not out there the whole time. I know that for sure. All right. Here we are, Tamtar, Deepcroft. We're going to finish this quest. It's going to open up the dungeon in here. And then I'll have to cut while we find our group. And I'll come back in just like we did with Sestasha. Um, uh, we'll come back in when we're ready to go inside. So let's talk to this person. You're Vesper Valentina, I take it? Thanks for helping us out, friend. No doubt the Bolord has already informed you, but your task is to enter the Deepcroft and purge it of the lands of Dalamud. In case you're unfamiliar with them, the cult emerged shortly before the Calamity put an end to the Sixth Astral Era. The cultists took the lesser moon, Dalamud, for their god, believing that it would deliver them from the devastation. And so they were rather disappointed when Dalamud exploded into a thousand flaming pieces before it could complete its descent. Now, having seen their god turn to ash, one would think that the cultists might feel moved to question their faith. On the contrary, it served only to stoke the flames of their fan fanaticism. The lambs of Dalamud are convinced that heretics, that is to say everyone but them, interfered with the coming of their lord and savior and that it's now their sacred duty to avenge them. Whatever it is they're doing to the deep craft, you may be sure that no good will come of it. For the sake of Gridania and Eorzea at large, put an end to their madness. Okay, so we've opened up the Tamtar deep craft. Um, I am going to cut here for a little bit and I'll come back to you guys as soon as I find a group and we're inside. So I'll be right back. Hello everybody, we are back. I managed to find a group and we are coming into Tamtar Deepcroft now. Uh, we'll watch the cutscene here. Again, a group of strangers, don't know them. Don't know if we will have a <laughs> eventful group like we did last time or what might happen. but. We are gonna run through Tamtar Deepcroft. I actually really like this dungeon uh, compared to some of the other ones. I think it's kind of fun, but we'll see how it goes. So we've got ourselves, we've got the mentor, <laughs> that's kind of cool. Uh, Kakana, Bizesativa, and Drago Stormthorn. So, unique group. Uh, looks like the mentor is going to be our tank. So we'll go ahead and throw some fires out there. Um, hopefully we'll get through this a little bit uneventful. <laughs> no one said hi or anything, so I'm not going to initiate, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, if they say hi to us, we'll say hi to them, of course. But it doesn't look like anyone's talkative, which is okay. It's a bunch of people with the newbie branch next to their name. So either new characters or people have really not run this before. Um... I'm not sure which one it is, but we will see. We're doing pretty good, so not too bad. Let's look at uh, what this glowing thing up here in the middle is. So I think this this person for sure. They've got Gambler even, so um, they've probably run this before. Definitely. And I th I'm hoping that we'll get that hat out of here. That's my that's my hope is that we'll get a better the headpiece is really the only thing that we're looking for at the moment. Do one more and then we'll switch over to ice. Okay. And then we um yeah, so everything else we got from the we went ahead and got from the Hall of the Novice. So the only piece we really need to replace is our our helmet. And I really want this white one that um, Kakana has on there. I'm not sure where she gets that though. I'm going in here. 
Okay, throw out some fire twos. Get uh, get that AOE stuff going. Um, I think like I haven't. I keep saying that I'm going to, but I haven't actually looked up how to play a thaumaturge <laughs> quite yet. I'm just going off of what makes sense. Um, I could be doing it just completely wrong though. There might be a better way to get a little more DPS. Um, but, you know, it's a low, low enough level that I don't think anyone will really call us on it, so. Let's get these, what are these, flesh fly swarms? That sounds gross. So. The story behind this place is that it's all the people who worshipped Dalamud, which was that giant dragon from the opening cutscene, I think. Um, so I have never listened or, I guess, read that lore before. <laughs> so it's kind of like I, I was a little bit surprised. To, oh, that's what's going on in here. Like, I never really asked myself, why are there these cultists and stuff in here? It never really, <laughs> like, registered. So that's kind of that's kind of fun to have to slow down and read it for you guys, because it it gives me a chance to actually figure out the lore as well. So it's kind of cool. Um, the boss in this place is really awesome. Okay, getting the blizzard going, and I don't think this group is going to have a problem at all with this dungeon. We're doing doing very well. The healer's doing a good job of balancing um, DPS and uh, and healing there's treasures up there do you want to go get the treasure up there I guess not <laughs> okay there's a treasure in here too oh well we're just gonna go with the group so whatever they whatever they're doing we're gonna follow them because I don't want to pull or anything like I did this guy Okay, he'll pull it back. He's good tank. Good tank. He he realized that right away. Uh, that we had pulled something which we probably should not have. Okay, let's get this other Akinic Varlet. Varlet? I don't know. I'm gonna throw a thunder out here to kind of dot him up, get some more DPS on him should help us. I wonder if we get a thunder too where like we get a mass DP or an, a mass dot going. Um that would be kind of cool. Let's see what we get in the treasure. He wasn't he's not going to take it. Okay, vials of ether went to Kakana. All right, let's catch up. They're going to come down here to the boss uh or not the boss like uh a boss-ish type thing. We have to fight these cultists here, and uh, as soon as we take these out, I think they summon um, summon another guy, and then we have to destroy all these cultist orbs that are leading up to this big one up here, and after we do that, we get to fight the main boss of the place, or like the last boss of the place. It's kind of a cool uh, layout. Some of the dungeons in Final Fantasy XIV so there are some that I do not like and I wish that we could skip. Um, specifically one, and I can't remember the name. It's the one with the big frog towards the end. It is just absolutely the worst thing. I, I have the worst time playing in that dungeon. I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> but every other dungeon that is really well made. There's, you know, variation in what you're doing. Because right now we're just basically going around killing stuff and that can get pretty boring but if you have to go around make sure you're touching these things um, to destroy the orbs and stuff like it, it's kinda cool that they they mix it up like that a little bit so let's just get this void what is it soul counter down um, and then we can destroy the orb and move on to the next one which is right over there but we are trapped in here right now I didn't the wall the purple walls are up so I didn't know if you guys noticed that or not but this is considered a boss fight so oh well we've kind of low DPS and that's probably my fault <laughs> I don't think I have quite the best um, and we can't use that so we're gonna pass on that I don't think we have quite the best gear going on 
Which, low enough level, you... I don't think they're really expecting anything else. It's different when... So, the dungeon system in this place is, is kind of cool where a high level can actually be put in this dungeon and they'll be put at a lower level. So they'll come in and they'll be on level for the dungeon. Um, so they will, can't, you can't come in and carry your friend through it or anything like that. Like you will be the level of the dungeon, even if you're at max level. Which I actually like that because it just, it, it ensures that you learn how to play your class in a dungeon. So if you're just getting carried through dungeons nonstop, um, by higher levels that are just one-shotting everything, you're not going to learn how to play your class. And I think that's what really sets this, these dungeons and this dungeon experience apart from other games. So I wish, I wish other games would do that as well. Looking at you, World of Warcraft. <laughs> so. Okay. I'm going to make sure that he goes first so that he can, he can do all these pulls because I'm going to do my fire too and that's going to be a pretty mass AoE. Like this monk just ran in there, the Pegalus just ran in there and getting messed the heck up. <laughs> so, and our healer's doing a really good job so that the tank's actually going down fairly fast. What was that noise? Oh, it was our limit break going up. So I'm actually not sure... Caster, area of effect attack. Okay, so if I do the limit break, it does an area of effect... An AoE, so I would hit everyone. So if we had like a mass... I know one dungeon, and that's going to be in the... Um, Ifrit fight. Uh, Ifrit extreme, where a black mage doing the area of effect is going to take out all of those nails all at the same time. And that they really look at the black mage to do that then. Otherwise, um, you normally save the limit breaks for, you know, boss fights, and the melee does it because it's a heavy single target. Uh oh, is my gear breaking? <laughs> is that what it say? So we just went through the last dungeon with our healer's gear breaking, and now mine is. It must be one of the rings because they don't get they go down pretty fast, so I'm not too concerned over it. Because otherwise we got all a bunch of new gear. But as soon as we get out here, I am going to have to repair. Because I don't want to run into a situation where I'm just not doing any damage <laughs> to these guys. Um, but it's good. I never... I don't know if I've ever played a caster where I've been needing to do my limit break. So I've never really looked at it before. So that's, that's good to know. It's an AoE attack. Because on the monk, it was it was always just, you know, the boss is getting down, do your, go ahead and do your limit break. Like, you were always the one that did the limit break once the boss got down to a certain level of health. So hopefully this pugilist or this monk um, will know that it's going to be his job on the, on the final boss to use the limit break. We, now we could use these... Um, but they look worse already, just looking at that defense and magic defense. Um, I am going to go ahead and greed them. We didn't get them. But the reason I greeted that is, um, maybe it could look. Like, because you can, you can change the look of your stuff later on. So sometimes I want to greed stuff just because it looks nice. Um, and I think some of the, the dungeon gear tends to look nicer than, than any other gear, so... Um, alright, let's, here's we are at the second orb, so we, we destroyed that one over here, we're at this one. Owie, those are nice, the mentor. <laughs> Finally someone spoke in the chat. And, and normally, like if I wasn't recording or anything like that, I would be talking to them, I'd say hello and stuff like that, so, um, not trying to just, you know, be mean to anyone or ignore them. Um, there's normally conversations when you go into a dungeon in this game you're normally talking with your group mates mates it's not not common to have a quiet group like this um, just to let anyone know who hasn't played this game uh, there's a lot of communication that normally happens happens in these groups so all right taking out this void soul counter uh, let's reapply our thunder because it actually ran out 
We should have probably reapplied it sooner than that. Um, so I need to watch that. It's up here on the bar. So it's counting down. So I need to watch and make sure that we're reapplying it and always keeping it up there. Like right now, I'll probably put it on when we have four seconds left. Because then it went down to one second. And then got back on. So. so that'll be how we do that. See, I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning how to play Thaumaturge. This is literally the highest I've been in this class. Oh, and so the other thing. When I ran out here, I actually got a, a level just coming out here. Oh, we got a new weapon. Um, yeah, I'm gonna need that. <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, the only thing is, I think that one goes along with a, with a mate, or a, a, um... So I'll put it on after this, uh, with a shield. It's a one-handed with a shield. So, um, I do have a shield, I believe. So we'll put that on as soon as we're done, uh, fighting these two guys. So I'm actually hitting the wrong one. Everyone else is fighting this guy and I was hitting the other guy. Um, but I was doing AOE DPS as well, so. Alright. Just kill this guy so I can put on my new weapon. Oh, and the healer actually pulled, or did I pull, off the tank. First. Okay, so we'll put this on. And I think we have to put on this with it. Yep, right? Yes. Okay, so let's update our gear. So we've got our new dungeon weapon, Ethereal Brass Cudgel. So we should be doing a little bit more damage. So we were doing about... Yeah, we're doing like 10, 10 more damage each hit now uh, with that. Maybe even a little bit more. So we were doing about 30 something. And we're, now we're doing like 58 with each of those. So that should help a lot, actually. <laughs> um, and the only reason we're behind on our damage and our DPS like that is that we, remember, we still have that level 15 Thaumaturge quest that we haven't quite completed yet. And so we're missing not only the gear from there, but we're also missing potentially a skill. And I don't know which skill it is that we're missing. Um, but we do have that to, to work on. Uh, which, uh, we might actually do that, um, after this dungeon. So, I'm assuming that this dungeon is going to get us very close to level 20. It's so close, in fact, that we will go ahead, uh, after this dungeon. We'll turn in the quest, we'll pick up the next one, and we'll go ahead and we'll unlock the next dungeon. Because there's one more after this. Um, but then we'll go and maybe do that level 15 Thaumaturge quest so that we can level up and then get the level 20 Thaumaturge quest. Because pretty soon here, I want to say level 30, we move from being a Thaumaturge to a Black Mage and there is going to be a, a quest and potentially a new trainer that we get all that from. So, so that's something to look forward to. Uh, we're doing- we're going along pretty well, actually. We're leveling fairly fast. Unfortunately, when we did the fishing stuff last episode, um, it ate up all of our- of our rested gear. So, we would have had rested for this, but the fishing just completely overtook it. Whoops. So I pulled, so I'm gonna run back to the tank so that he can know to pull it back. If he's paying attention. Hopefully he is. Yep, there he goes. He did his flash. So if if you ever pull like that and you're a caster, um, I learned that very early on in my MMO career. <laughs> that if you pull, you run to the tank so that they can... Don't run away, because that's gonna... They, they will let you know about that, but you run to the tank so that they can pull that, that mob off of you. Alright. So we should have just one, one or two more orbs. Um, and I think, I think the last two are actually in the same spot. Looks like our tank wants to get through here fast. He's skipping all these treasure coffers, which I'm not, again, I'm not concerned about getting everything um, because at some point I'll probably run back through all these again. And, um, you know, you do a lot of dungeon grinding. You saw that challenge log that we got last episode. And if you open the challenge log, one of the things is complete dungeons via the duty roulette. 
uh, complete five dungeons. So I, I am gonna do a lot of that off camera every time. I mean, well, anytime I go into a dungeon for the first time, I'll record it. Um, but after that, unless we're doing like a quick, quick dungeon crawl or something, we might do a video on. But um, other than that, they're not gonna be on camera because it's just the same thing. You know, this doing this all over again. Uh, over and over, non-stop. So, uh, yeah, that that's gonna be... Once we get up there, I won't have to worry about doing stuff that I would rather record. And I'll have- I'll actually have time to do those grinds and stuff <laughs> without worrying about entertaining you guys while I'm doing them. <laughs> Which is not bad, I like- I like making these videos and I mean that- I would hope so if I continue to do them, so. But, oh, is this the la the sealed barrier, the last one? So we have to go get something, I think, in the next room to be able to break into this sealed barrier. All right, let's get this last guy down. And then we gotta come down here, I think, to be able to open this. In here, there's like a rose something? I honest. Cultist Rosary, yeah, Cultist Rosary. We need to get that to be able to open that sealed gate. Oh, and we didn't get a food buff. Is he, where's he running to? Did our healer accidentally pull? Is that what's going on? Yeah. The healer pulled and then did what I just said not to do and they ran away from the tank. <laughs> oh gosh. So we're standing a little close, so we do have to watch out for that AoE. So I'm actually going to run over here so that... That could be why... You know what? Now that I think about it, that's probably why um, Thaumaturge does need to stay at a distance, and that's probably why. So that we're not targeted. Um, if we're up close like that, we're constantly dodging. So stay at a distance as a Thaumaturge so you don't have to dodge out of stuff like that. Makes sense. <laughs> Alright, we'll get these last guys taken care of. And hopefully, did someone already pick up the rosary? No. So I'll go, go grab the rosary. And then anyone can grab it and anyone can touch the wall and it will open. So like I grabbed it. If Kakana up there wants to touch the wall, it will open for them. So it doesn't have to be the person that grabs it, which I like that as well. All right, sealed barrier. Sealed barrier is down. We've got two of them, two groups. So our tank hopefully will not fight him right there. Hopefully pull him up a little bit longer, please. Yes, okay. So we'll fight him up here in the corner. We'll do our AOE fires and Work on getting that group down. We're actually doing pretty good as a... I really like that. Okay. I wonder if I should run up there and do be doing Blizzard too, but I don't think so. I think we just do the normal Blizzard to get our mana back up. Um, and then we'll put a Thunder on the main Void Soul counter. Oh, who pulled him? Okay. And then... Single single target will always be fired because it does more damage. Like we did 97 instead of 50 something. So we'll always do more damage single target with fire one. Yeah. The tank, I mean, is going down pretty fast when they get hit. And I think it's because they're a warrior, not a paladin. Which means no shield. But they should be evading more. Maybe it, it might, again, just be low level. And, and the classes could have definitely changed since the last time I've played because it's, it has been a while since I looked at the classes and, and did all that. We, we forgot to reapply our thunder. We gotta get better at that. <laughs> Making sure the thunder is always on the target. Here we go. I'll get this one. There's the loot, which we can't wear. This is a Disciple of War, so I'm actually gonna pass that. And I'll let you guys watch the little cutscene so we can see the boss. Hopefully they don't pull uh, before we run in. Hopefully they notice that I'm watching the cutscene. I didn't ask them if I could or not, but 
Who summons me from the void to reside within this crude vessel? This is the boss. <laughs> Squid boss. Okay, good. I wasn't the only one watching it, so... And we got the uh, mapping the realm. Tamtar deep crop. So we got ten more achievement points. Alright, so with this boss, um, we're going to fight him for a little bit, and then there will be ads that come up. And then there's going to be things around the outer edge of this giant circle that we're on that we actually need to um, destroy because they're going to make him invincible. Um, I think that's all on the, on the normal one that happens. Like this. This guy's making him invincible, so we have to kill this first. Otherwise, he's not going to take hardly any damage if we hit him. So we got to kill this guy out here. And I don't think the monk... So, the monk might actually be a brand new player, because he's not doing any of the mechanics that you would normally do, which is not bad. And no one told him, so how would you, like, expect him to know to do that? So, it's alright. I'll forgive him. <laughs> but especially in new dungeons, like, whenever I go to a new dungeon, I usually ask, like, what's, what's the mechanic? What, what do I have to do here? Oh shoot, I think I just messed up the rotation just a little bit. So I'm gonna take care of that guy in the back. Unfortunately with the blizzard. And then we'll swap over and we'll get these guys up front. The skeleton and the main guy with the fire twos going on. Here we go. Put a thunder back on the main guy. And he's probably gonna have some more... Adds and then a wee get out of that. <laughs> and you should not do what I just did and walk backwards because you go way so slow. Uh, you'll get caught in anything. If this was a higher level dungeon, I would have been, I would have been caught in that. And there is dungeons or there are dungeons that will one shot you if you get caught in something. So, all right, okay, more of these side guys here. So we'll get these guys, get these guys down. Inconspicuous imp. Um, and good thing the the uh, tank went after those skeletons because they all went on the healer. But we're we're taking care of the imps slowly but surely. It should be the monk that's taking care of the imps and me who's taking care of this because I have better AOE than the monk. But since he doesn't know, no, it's all right. <laughs> We'll, we'll live with it. Okay, and then I don't have to move, so I can continue casting. And that's why we stay so far back. So I don't have to run out of stuff. Our limit break is there, so hopefully the monk... Now would be a good time for the monk to limit break. I don't think he knows. And I could tell him, but we almost got it down. It's alright. There we go. Okay, so we beat him. We get to see him get defeated. <laughs> it would be cool if you could win his robe or maybe that crown that he's wearing. That would be kind of cool to get as gear out of here. Duty complete. A pair of uh, Acolyte's thigh boots. That sounds like a casting boot. <laughs> like a casting boot. I wonder if I can... Um... Alright, let's see the loot. I don't know if it's better than what we have on is the only problem. So we have one, two, one, two, two, one, two, one, two. I mean, it's the same. I'm going to pass them. And then give a player commendation. I'm going to give it to the tank because he did a great job as tanking. Um, I tend to give it to the healer or sometimes I give it to the DPS because I know they'll never get one. Oh, and we got one on our own. We received a player commendation. Someone gave it to us. I like to think that someone noticed that we were killing the things that needed to be killed. <laughs> but that, that may not be the case. Oh, I was out here grinding uh, Ingridania. I, I'm going to have to look at the... Uh, look at the... It actually looks really bad on my screen. Because um, I turned down more graphics. But I'm going to have to look at when we upload to YouTube to see if it looks a little better. Um, because like I, I said in a previous one, is the bitrate in Gridania, because of all this stupid grass and stuff around here, it 
it just blurs the heck out of <laughs> the videos when you upload them. And I've tried every amount of settings in the recording and how to like compress and stuff. So um, I think we might just have to deal with that. I've been trying to watch other people play it to see if they're having the same problem. And so most of them do. Most of them have problem in Gridania or any of the shrouds um, because the grass just, the bit rate on the grass is ridiculous. Now I also want to be look on the lookout of uh, for, and I think it's in Alda, the quest that takes us to the casino, <laughs> the uh, gold saucer. So let's turn this in to Mother Mion, see what she has to say. Welcome back, Vesper. I'm reliably informed that your foray into the deep croft was a success. Nor did I expect anything less. Batteron's ringing endorsement left me in little doubt as to your capabilities. Even so, you are to be commended. Bolord Lewin asked me to pass on his thanks. I must say, it's something of a relief to be able to call upon such a capable adventurer. What's she thinking about? Sadly, death has become an ever more common occurrence within our fraternity of late. Times being what they are, the guild is constantly inundated with petitions, and we are hard-pressed to find enough hands to deal with them all. While this means no shortage of work for able souls such as yourself, it also provides ample opportunity for the inexperienced to overreach themselves with predictable consequences. Ah, uh, as if to illustrate the point. Aw. Someone said... Avery's gone, and it's all your fault. If it hadn't taken you an age to heal him, he would still be alive. Typical MMO, yelling at their healers. <laughs> That's what happens when you're in a group. It, someone dies, it's always the healer's fault. But, but I tried. He bolted out of range before I could finish this spell. He shouldn't have been so hard-pressed in the first place. We should have done more to lighten his burden. Bah! To the hells with this p pathetic excuse for a party. I'm leaving, and it'd be too soon if I never see your faces again. Goodbye and good riddance. I'm leaving as well. I doubt this comes as any surprise, but I never liked you. I only suffered you for your healing, but you couldn't even do that one thing right. Cruel though this may sound, you brought this upon yourself. Dang! Oh, and by the way, and by way of some parting advice, get rid of Aver's head. Bury it, cremate it, do whatever the hell you like with it. But for God's sake, stop carrying it around. It's, it's just, just get rid of it, all right? She's carrying around his head. <laughs> what? Well, wait, don't leave me alone, please. I'm so sorry, Averi. Please forgive me. Oh, poor healer. Always the healer's fault. Scenes like this have become all too common. That makes a dozen times in half as many days. Now you see why I'm grateful for adventurers of your experience. I can send women like you on a mission without worrying that you might not return. Well, not so much at any rate. Speaking of missions, I would entrust you with another. About a bell ago, I received a message from my counterpart in Alda. She seeks the services of a reliable adventurer and you are nothing if not reliable. If you think you might be interested in this task, say the word, and I will be glad to share the details with you. Sure. Um, are these gloves better? No. So we're gonna take the money. We get a high, three high potions, three ethers, and lots of experience, which should help us get closer. I didn't even look how close we were to level 20. Oh, perfect. Okay, so we'll talk to her again, and then we'll actually... That'll leave us, like I said, for the next episode to do our guild... Our thaumaturge quest, though. Oh, here! We're gonna get a new mask. So, um, so, you're not adverse to taking a little trip? Wonderful. As I mentioned earlier, the request comes to us from the Adventurers Guild in Alda. Once you arrive, seek out Mamadi, the proprietress of the quicksand. Oh, we're well acquainted with her. <laughs> Think of her as the Sultanate's version of myself. Chances are she'll send you into the midst of danger, but I have every confidence that you will pull through unscathed. Now off you go, Vesper, and good luck. Thank you, and we can just return. Well, first, let me just look at the map real quick. Make sure that none of these are the guild, the uh, gold saucer quest. I don't think so. Don't see any else. Okay, let's return to Alda. Yes. And then we can speak with Mamadi. It might even level us up. I doubt it, but it we'll get very close. But we're just going to prepare for next episode of doing the Thaumaturge. Uh, level 15 quest and then eventually doing the um 
Oh. It could happen to you. I think that might be it. Let's go see. I think that's the gold saucer one, right? Let's go see. Uh, well healed youth. Look at this little lollipop carrying these packages. Okay. Um, let's see. Do be careful with those. Break anything and I shall be forced to deduct it from your salary. Uh huh. Beg pardon? What is my loyal manservant carrying? Why, a not so small fortunes of prizes ably won by yours to- Oh, at the gold saucer. Yeah, this is it. You have heard of the gold saucer. Nay? Ye gads, woman, you might at least try to keep up with the times. It's only the Sultanate's newest and finest place of entertainment. Thrilled to the sight of majestic birds roaring down the straits at the chocobo races, pit your wits against your peers at the triple triad tables, at the gold saucer, one can do all this and more. And if you know what you're about, you'll walk out a wealthier woman than you entered. If there's a better place to shake off one's cares after a grueling day of promenading, I've never heard of it. Did I mention the prizes? Ah, but I dare say you'd rather discover them for yourself. Yes, I'll wager you're just won you're wondering just how in Thal's good name you can experience the wonders of the gold saucer firsthand. Am I right or am I right? Ha, I thought as much. Well, since this happened, this has been my lucky day, I don't see why it shouldn't be yours too. Just so happens to have a spare golden airship ticket, you see. Consider it a gift from me to you, milady. Why, thank you. Just show that ticket to the fine lady over at the landing, and you'll have a seat on the next airship bound for revelry and riches. Be fairly warned, though. You may expect no mercy from me should our pa paths cross at the triple triad table. Tables, wow. Nay, not so much as an aunt's. Ha ha. Cool, so we just unlocked the gold saucer. Um, but first, let's go talk to Mamadi. And uh, depending on how long this takes, we might actually... Mm, no, I think what we'll do, we'll turn this in. And we'll end, because we are getting close, we'll end by turning this into Mamadi. Um, and then next episode, we'll do our Thaumaturge quests and go visit the Gold Saucer and do some gambling. <laughs> so, Mamadi, welcome to the quicksand, friend. I'm a tad busy right now. If you wouldn't mind showing yourself to... Oh, it's you, Vesper. And here I was spouting the same tired line. Mion sent word that you'd be reporting for duty. She also made a point of calling you the adventurer of the moment. That ain't no small praise coming from her. But you didn't come all the way here to listen to my prattle. Doubtless you're eager, eager to get started. So let's talk business, shall we? And we're going to get a new... So we're going to wear a mask. Oh, and we got level 20. <laughs> and we got the achievement for reaching level 20. What else did we get? Anything? An attribute point. Which we will put straight into intelligence. And then... Um, a new a new mask that we're gonna put on because it replaces that <laughs> we look ridiculous but update the gear set and that should be good all right let's pick up the next one mamadi is waiting to brief you on your task okay let's see what she's got to say the petitioner ought to be arriving any moment now God's almighty, another second under the sun and I would have been set afire. A tankard of ale, if you would be so kind. It's Papishan. Hi. Excellent timing, Papishan. It just so happens the adventurer who will be handing your petition is here. Oh, wife, it isn't my good friend Vesper. Oh, he recognized us. That's cool. <laughs> it does my spirit well to know that you are the one who will be helping us. Mayhap you'd like to apprise Vesper on her mission? Yes, of course. The petition in question was submitted by an acquaintance of mine at, at Amagina and Son's Mineral Concern. It relates to an unfortunate development at Copper Bell Mines. To be plain, giants have seized control of the place. These giants are of the clan known as the... Oh, God. <laughs> Hecatonchir. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, that this word right here. Fearsome creatures who were sealed within the deepest depths of the mines during the bygone Thorn Dynasty. Alas, it seems they have managed to break through the layer of rock which served to imprison them, and now prowl the tunnels where the miners ply their trade. The creatures are justifiably angry about their treatment at the hands of our ancestors, and their presence has forced the suspension of all mining activities on the site. It's no wonder they're angry. Didn't the Throne Dynasty come to an end over 300 years ago? You know your history well, my lady. 
The people of that age used the Hecaton Cures to work their minds. By way of enchanted helms, they were able to bind the ferocious creatures to their will. But as is oft the way in such tales, these enchantments eventually failed, and the slaves rose up against their masters. In a desperate bid to contain the unbridled fury of the Hecaton Trons, <laughs> our ancestors induced the collapse of the mine's lowermost levels. So it was that the great giant revolt was ended, buried beneath a hundred thousand tons of rock. Well now, that's got me thinking. I seem to recall there being an article about Copper Bell in the Mithril Eye a fortnight or so ago. It said the mines were being reopened so as to meet the rise in demand for building materials. Like as not, our boys dug a bit too deep and freed the giants, just like in the Lord of the Rings. The dwarves delved too deep and they opened up the bell rock. <laughs> Gods, to think the poor creatures are still alive and kicking after three centuries. That's a long time to nurse a grudge. They must be seething. Indeed, and that makes them a danger to us all. There will be no mining at Copper Bell so long as they remain. For the sake of both peace and prosperity, they must be subdued. This is a task which, ye which we would have you undertake. I'll not deny that the mission will be rife with danger, but our need is great. And so I beg you, put an end to this sorry business. Sure. God bless you. I feared you might have reser reservations, but I assure you it is for the best. Hmm, in case you don't know, Copper Bell Mines are in western Thanaland. Do take care, you hear? Ah, and one last thing before you depart. An employee of Imagina and Sons is presently at the quicksand. The fellow's name is Painted Mesa, and he knows Copper Bell Mines well. It may behoove you to seek his counsel. Okay. Well, we will do that next time, because right now, it is time to end the episode. <laughs> So next time we'll do the same thing that we did here. We will, oh, he's right here. We'll talk to Painted Mesa and we will actually head into Copper Bell Mines as well. Um, it probably won't take us the whole episode. So when we do that, uh, do I want to say that we're going to do that? We'll either head into Copper Bell Mines or we'll do our level 15 and 20 um, Thaumaturge quest. So I'll make up my mind by the next time we come on here. Uh, but look forward to both of those coming up soon and the gold saucer we have as well. And we'll probably spend a whole episode just hanging out in the gold saucer, uh, seeing what it has to offer. So we've got a lot to do and I'm very excited that we're getting to where the world's starting to open up and we can explore and do all this stuff. So hopefully you guys are still enjoying the, the series. If you do want to see more of it, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys next time. All right. Bye-bye everyone.